In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can bypass some of those detectors that you are trying to run a game in a virtual machine. So as part of this video, the prerequisite here is that you have a virtual machine running Windows 10 already running in your host machine. There is another video that you can go through to see how you can create a Windows 10 virtual machine on a host machine. And today we're going to just start with you already have a virtual machine and you're trying to get your game to run here. So the first step here is, as you can see, I have VMware tools already installed. And the reason I, I have this is so that I can transfer files. Well, one of the reasons is so that I can transfer files into this virtual machine through copy paste. So I have here a game um, that is essentially a a variant or a flavor of MapleStory. So I'm going to copy that and paste that in on the desktop of my virtual machine. And I want to do this in real time so that you have an, you have a rough gauge on the time estimate that's needed uh, to perform this action. So there are two copying processes. The first is to copy the files into the virtual machine, uh, but into its cache directory. And the second is to copy from that cache directory into the desktop. So this is the first step. And when this is complete, you will see another dialogue within the premise of the virtual machine that will then show you the actual transfer of the files to the desktop. Okay, so that now that is done, I'm going to start by showing you that the application can actually not, or the game cannot actually run in this VM or virtualized environment. So as you can see, we get this error here by Thamita that detected this game is trying to be started in a virtual machine. And so this game will not run here unless we do a couple of things uh, to bypass this check. So the first step that we're going to do is um, we're going to turn off this virtual machine. So shut down. Once that is shut down, we're going to follow a step of, uh, or a series of procedures and steps. This website, uh, VMware Hardened Loader, this is a guide that is written by someone um, on the internet by the internet handle HZQST. He has developed some code that can run in a virtualized environment, right? That would um, bypass the checks for things like VM Protect 3.2, Safe Engine, and Thamita. So in my case, my game is protected by Thamita. So this is actually a great tool that can allow me to bypass this NDVM feature. So the first step that we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of things into the .vmx file. So what is a VMX file? Right? It's essentially a list of metadata information for your virtual machine. And the way that you can tell where this is, is if you go back to your virtual or VMware workstation, click on edit virtual machine settings, and then go into options tab here, and you will see under working directory, this is where your virtual machine resides. And so this is also where the VMX file will be. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on copy, and then I'm gonna go into that folder 
So once I'm in that folder, I can see there's this whole bunch of files here. So then which one is that VMX file? Well, that VMX file as stated in this guide is an extension, right? It's .vmx. So first of all, in Windows by default, the file extensions are hidden. So in Windows 11, you can click on see more and click on options. And in Windows 10, you have to click on tools and then folder options, right? So here in under folder options, go to the view tab and there should be an option here that says um, hide extensions for known file types, right? So this is by default checked. You wanna uncheck this, hit apply and hit okay. Once you do that, it becomes very apparent, which is the .vmx file, right? And make sure you do not edit the wrong file because if you edit the wrong file, then your virtual machine may very well become corrupted, right? So first of all, I'm gonna make a backup of this file. So that means I'm just gonna copy that and I'm just gonna paste that. And I'm gonna call it .vmx.bak for backup, right? And then I'm gonna I'm going to right click on the VMX file, open with, you can choose Notepad or any text editing tool. For me, I'm used to Visual Studio Code, so I'll just open it up in Visual Studio Code. So, the, so we scroll down to the bottom and we go to the last line here. And the instruction says here, we want to add the following lines of information to the VMX file. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Right, and now you want to make sure to save it, right? Once this is saved, um, let's go back here. There is an additional instruction in case that you have set up your virtual machine to use virtual SCSI disk drive. So most of us at this moment should not be using this option, but the way that you can check here is again, to go back to the settings here and click on edit virtual machine settings. And here you can see um, under disks or under hard disk, you can see for me that's MVME. And so this depends on, so, so the value here depends on how you set this virtual machine up at, uh, when you were creating it. So here, if I go into advanced, you can see that this is MVME, none of this is SCSI. So that means I don't have to do that step. But if you created your virtual machine to use SCSI, then you have to also at these two lines, for example, using this, uh, it at towards the end of your VMX file. So for me, I do not have to do that. And so this is actually complete. So I'm just gonna close this at this moment. Okay. Next. What I wanna do next is now, this comes to the second step where you have to modify your virtual machine's MAC address. So MAC, M-A-C, stands for Media Access Control. And the MAC address of, so the MAC address uh, attributes, is an attribute of your network interface card, right? So every network interface card or virtual network interface card would have a unique MAC address. And this MAC address is a lot like your social security number in the sense that it uniquely identifies each um, network interface card. So how is this done? Every network interface card manufacturer is, has a range of MAC addresses that it would assign, right? And VMware would also have its own range that it would assign. So there, therein lies the problem, right? If your game or your software that uh, that, it, that prevents you pro from running it in a virtual environment, one of the options that it has, right, to stop you from running itself in a virtualized environment is to detect whether you have a MAC address in the range that is expected of, say, VMware or some other hypervisor. Because if it is, then chances are your environment is a virtualized environment and they would be able to stop you. So there is a necessity um, to edit this MAC address. The person gives you a sample here, but you really should not use the same MAC address as him. Um, as you can imagine, this would have been used 
by a lot of people and you really do not want you know game companies or game um, administrators to mistake you for some others who might have done you know other things to get themselves blacklisted right so what you need to do here is okay so i'm just going to copy this value but i'm going to modify this value so i do not use this exact one right so i'm going to go into um, again, edit virtual machine. Okay, so I, I still have this dialog box open, but suppose if you didn't, you want to come back to VMware Workstation and click on edit virtual machine settings and go into network adapter and click on advanced. Once you're there, you, you want to replace this with the value that is on the website, but you want to edit it. So for example, I'm going to change E8 to FA. Right, just as, as an example. Like you want this to be different. You don't want to use the same one as me. So you, you may want to edit this to something like a one. So so this is a 16, um, 16 uh, value or 16 base number. So here you can have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? So I'm going to use the term FA, right? That's essentially, uh, I think, 16 and 11, right? Okay. And click on OK. Okay. And once that is done, let's review the third step. The third step requires you to run an install.bat, and bat is just extension for batch, um, in the VM guest using administrator privileges. So we're going to have to run this in the guest operating system. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start the virtual machine. So obviously, in order to run this file, you first have to have this file. And that file is actually located in the bin directory of the files that you can download in this option. But we're not going to download this in the host operating system because we need to run that in the guest operating system. So we're going to power on this virtual machine. And then we're going to navigate to that, um, to that web page. And it's, it's easy to find this web page. You just have to search for this, right? VMware Harden uh, Loader, right? Use any search engine that you have, and it usually should pop up as the first result, right? So I'm going to do the same in my virtualized environment. Okay. So here, with the things here, what I need to do is uh, I need to first go open up my browser. Okay, I have yet to set this up, but... Okay, oh, there's a lot of setup, okay. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I'm gonna do a search. Um, I'm gonna search for VMware hardened loader. And as usual, the first search result is what I need. And so first I wanna download this file, but you're gonna realize there is gonna be a problem. And the problem is your antivirus software will treat this as a threat. And that's because in the bin directory, there is a vmloader.sys. And vmloader.sys is actually a very important file for this to work. Right? You're, you're kind of modifying the system identity and tricking you know, other applications. So Windows will mark this uh, as, as malicious. And in some, you know, in some ways it is, right? But we are trying to bypass some systems and that in itself is kind of like with malicious intent. So obviously we want to do this anyway. And so the first thing that we need to do is to change some settings in Windows security. And if you're using another another third party um, antivirus software, uh, you're going to have to find out how to do that. So in order to open uh, Windows security, first you want to click on this arrow and just find the Windows security icon and double click it. That is one option. The other option is you click on start and type Windows security. 
right? And then just open that application. So in here, go to the virus and threat protection tab. And we're going to have to find a way to exclude, right? The downloads folder, <clears throat> because once you download it, that's the downloads folder is typically where it goes. If you have configured a different directory, then you have uh, to set up exclusion in that custom directory. So I'm going to go ahead and go to virus and threat protection settings. And I'm just going to click on under controlled folder access. Not sorry, not this one. Under exclusions, click on add or remove exclusions. Right. And so currently um, I have no excluded folders or files. So this is an empty list. So you want to click on add an exclusion, click on folder and select your downloads folder and select folder. Yes. And this folder is currently excluded from firewall scans, or sorry, the antivirus scans. So now if you go back to the to the web page, again attempt to download this fo this file and it should work. Because this process now bypasses the scan process. Okay, so you want to go to your downloads folder and extract the files. I'm just going to remove this folder because there's a nested folder with the same name in it. All right. Okay. So once that is extracted, um, we now want to just take a look at what's inside. Make sure that in your bin directory there is uh, there is the VM loader and there is the install uh, batch file. Right. Again, no, you know, if you go into uh, view and then you go to options and you go to you go to um, you uncheck this extension, you will see this is install dot bat. Right. That's the file that we need to run. Right. Okay. So the next step, they that the, uh, you are supposed to run that file as administrator. Right. So. You can actually just right click this and click on run as administrator, but I'm going to run it in PowerShell so that once this is complete, it doesn't just disappear so that I, so that I can show you what uh, the, the, the text output is like. So I'm going to navigate to PowerShell and run as administrator. And I'm going to navigate to this directory. Okay, make sure the install.bat is here and execute install.bat. Actually, before I do this, I also first need to create a firewall exception for, for this file to appear in C drive. Because as part of this process, this is going to copy this file into the C drive. And Windows um, Defender or Windows Security is going to go blare all, all of its alarms again at this file because it thinks this file is malicious. So we're going to have to come back into Windows Security and add another exclusion. In this case, we're going to add a file. And we're going to go into C drive. The file that we need to exclude is just called vmloader.sys, but the file does not exist yet. So we first need to create a dummy copy of this file. So if I go into the C drive, And so if I go into Notepad and run as administrator, this step is important for you to save into the C drive. And I'll just click on File, Save As, and navigate to the C drive. And then we're going to call it vmloader.sys, except that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in quotes. Right? Putting the file name in quotes would uh, guarantee that it saves with the .sys extension instead of being saved as a text file. So click on save. And you will see this file here with zero kilobyte, which means that it contains absolutely nothing. But at least now you have a dummy file here that you can now use for, for, for the exclusion. So I'm going to double click that file. And now you can see VM loader.sys in the C drive is now also excluded from uh, antivirus scannings. And by the way, if, if you're not comfortable with with adding exclusion or you know with any antivirus software um, short, um, 
detecting this as potentially malicious, then please do not use this software, right? You, you would not be able to bypass the Thermida and the, the game detection uh, software. But, um, you know, it's with everything on the internet, it is your responsibility uh, to make sure things that you are doing is, is you know, in, your, in accordance with your personal values and also uh, what you are willing to do, right? So in my case, my virtual machine is created solely for the purpose of running this game. I do not have any passwords or credit card information in the entire operating system. So I'm com comfortable with doing this and ex adding all of these files as, as excluded. Okay, so now that we have created the exclusion, we're gonna delete this file because the real one has to be copied here. Okay, now with that out of the way, I'm gonna run install.bat. And once I, once I run this, as you can see, the first step it did was to copy the file into C drive as expected. And then it created a, a path, right? Where um, so, if someone starts VM loader, that's gonna start the this particular system file. And it started the VM loader service. So it's running as a service on Windows um, and is currently, so this, is, this operation is successful. But at this point, we're still not yet done because I started with a copy of um, VMware uh, with VMware tools. So that also means that I have um, things in my registry that was persisted by VMware tools that would still give the identity of this VM as a VM away, right? So the next step that, that, that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna close out my folders and the, the browser because I don't need those anymore and I'm gonna start registry editor. So click on start, type reg, and you will see this app called registry editor. You wanna open that app um, and you wanna go to this particular key, which I'll start typing. So under computer, you wanna go to H key uh, local machine, and then go to system, and then go to current control set, and then go to control, class. And then there's a bunch of GUIDs that make sure that you type this correctly. So 4D 36E 968. And so by the time you type the first uh, segment of this GUID string, you will see that there's only one option, right? And this option ends in 10318. So you wanna click that. And under this, well, folder, uh, layman term, it's not the exact technical term, but under this folder, you will find 0000, right? And in this folder, you will find a lot of entries with the word VMware in it. You wanna make sure you edit all of those that says VMware. So for example, for driver, and, and you don't wanna leave them blank, right? Just to be clear. So you just wanna remove the VMware component uh, and anything that suggests this is a virtual machine. So this is okay. So here I'm gonna remove the first two words. Um, and here I, you do not wanna use VMware Inc. You can use some other company like any, you know, any other company, but but VMware. And so this should be okay, right? SVGA and Microsoft and well, there's no v VMware term in this anymore. So this should be all you need for uh, bypassing game security systems that try to prevent you from running them in a virtual machine. So let's put that to the test.
and I'm just going to press alternate enter so that it goes into windowed mode. But at this point, you can see this game is running um, without me using, uh, well, in a virtual machine environment. This is running on Windows 10 in VMware Workstation that is running on top of my Windows 11. And that is the objective that we wanted to reach at the start of the video. Thank you.